Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's uh, go through next uh, webinar uh, of uh, future law. Uh, this time on the topic uh, will be related to cybersecurity uh, for lawyers. Uh, as you probably know or heard or read uh, in some uh, news for the last, uh, mainly 2023, but also 21, 22, uh, every year we have uh, more and more uh, cyber incidents uh, related to legal market. Uh, on some markets, such information is maybe not so uh, uh, widely known uh, or even uh, public, but still, uh, at least in some uh, news websites, we have uh, a lot of information related to uh, different uh, markets and different incidents. Uh, that uh, that can also appear from the, from the side of the security of uh, of law firms on the on the market. It's also related to to, uh, to the public side uh, of uh, of jurisprudence and uh, and legal market. But uh, today we will mainly uh, focus on uh, cybersecurity incidents and also uh, on uh, those incidents on uh, on legal market and. Uh, Alexander will uh, will lead us also through uh, some uh, responses and and tools to uh, let's say feel uh, at least a bit uh, secure. So uh, uh, nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Przemysław Parhan. Uh, I'm uh, ELTA ambassador in Poland, uh, also director of uh, the Institute of Legal Tech uh, of the National Bar Council uh, in Poland. Uh, I'm also a tech lawyer, uh, AI specialist and cyber cybersecurity specialist uh, uh, on uh, legal markets uh, here uh, in Poland. And with me, uh, it's Alexander. Uh, if you could say something also about uh, you. Sure. Um, I've been a consultant to large organizations, uh, namely, for example, the nuclear power plant of the United Arab Emirates, uh, some government organizations in the Middle East, uh, I worked as part of Microsoft's security consulting team in the Middle East and Asia. And in the past few years, I've been working with uh, many law firms uh, across Europe and the United States, uh, consulting them on cybersecurity. So I think my uh, what I've experienced, I can share uh, and share some technical advice today that you can apply right after the webinar or even during the webinar to increase your cyber uh, defenses great uh, let's start uh, today's uh, today webinar we will divide into uh, three parts at first uh, i will go through uh, with my presentation uh, on let's say the introduction to uh, to the topic and after me alexander will uh, go through his uh, uh, his part uh, related to uh, response uh, tools and, and processes and after that we will have a q a uh, session uh, during which uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer your questions so let me start with my presentation Okay, let's start with uh, some introduction related to, uh, in general, digital transformation uh, on the legal market. Uh, as you know, digital transformation, it's uh, not only on digital market, we see it uh, every day in our uh, private life and also uh, in our profession, also in other, uh, uh, other businesses, other economic uh, sectors, uh, but, uh, Placing lawyer in digital environment, placing law firm in digital environment, we need to see that uh, to be a modern law firm, to be modern lawyer, and uh, in order to uh, also provide uh, modern services, uh, we are surrounded by uh, a lot of uh, tools, uh, a lot of uh, equipment that it's uh, related to, uh, let's say, digital uh, environment in which we store uh, our data, in which we provide services. Uh, and even, even now, uh, we uh, have this webinar and share uh, our knowledge and experience uh, with you. And the same like uh, Lawyers is uh, doing it with uh, his, uh, her clients. Uh, as you 
possibly know, uh, digital transformation for the last uh, even a couple of years or even more uh, is related to uh, technology implemented at, or that could be implemented in, in law firms. Uh, also, it's related to the side of uh, communication, uh, in um, yeah, inside communications within the organization, and also uh, ways of communication with uh, potential or, or current uh, clients. And it's also related to its uh, safety. Uh, also, digital transformation is related to data uh, data that uh, that we store uh, on our uh, servers, on our uh, equipment, uh, including laptops, including uh, our uh, smartphones. So uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, places, a lot of tools and a lot of equipment that can possibly store our data. Uh, also, which it's uh, in fact uh, a lot of, uh, in many times uh, not, uh, or it's even forget about uh, by, by a lot of uh, people. Uh, so Internet of Things, uh, I don't know if you uh, are acknowledging the, the fact that when we are logging uh, into our car with our phone, uh, even to, to have calls uh, during our uh, driving, uh, you also give access to your uh, data, including uh, data of uh, contact details uh, of your of your whole uh, whole contact uh, book, uh, which also it's uh, confidential from the side if it's related to uh, your clients. And uh, also this one is the one of the most uh, let's say uh, security uh, sphere that it's. Uh, uh, that, that it's uh, related to uh, some uh, safety and incident uh, reasons. That's why even uh, on the grounds of uh, EU law, uh, there are um, uh, works and, and in future implementations of acts that will uh, impose on uh, Internet of Things manufacturers and providers uh, to provide more secure uh, equipment uh, for uh, all of the society and also uh, business. Uh, as well, uh, digital transformation is related to automation of uh, our inside processes uh, as of uh last two years, but in fact, uh, last year, uh, also uh, implementations or possibly uh, thinking about implementations in our organizations of uh, AI tools. Uh, last week, as I remember, last or, or last two weeks, um, OpenAI uh, opened the possibility in their marketplace to uh, to also um, publish your own uh, uh, chat uh, tool that is based on chat GPT, so uh, you can share your own uh, your own version of uh, chat GPT. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, related to networking. If uh, we are working uh, in some bigger communities uh, of lawyers to to provide services or, or exchange of uh, information. Uh, but uh, going uh, just to the topic and potential uh, security, cybersecurity uh, side of, uh, of work of lawyers and law firms, uh, at first you need to know about uh, potential uh, sources of, uh, of threats. And uh, here you can see uh, the basic uh, top threat actors uh, that were proposed uh, by uh, ENISA in their uh, ENISA threat landscapes in uh, 2022. So uh, as you can see, uh, we have state sponsor actors, cybercrime actors, uh, hackers for hire uh, actors and hacktivists, also with uh, some examples of them. Uh, Mainly related state sponsored actors, uh, we can see uh, mainly from Russia, North uh, Korea, and uh, China. Uh, which, uh, but uh, don't be, uh, uh, don't think that they are not interested in legal markets. Uh, last year, one of the biggest uh, uh, cyber attacks on law firms uh, in Australia, uh, I will uh, share this information uh, later, was uh, conducted by. Uh, such a state sponsor uh, actor. Uh, also, we have cybercrime actors, which uh, are just uh, normal cybercrime uh, um, actors that uh, that uh, attack uh, different organizations uh, mainly for uh, for, for ransom uh, reasons. Uh, also, we have uh, hackers for hire, or just they can just be uh, hired for uh, dedicated uh, attacks by by anyone, or just uh, they give possibility to use uh, their own uh, tools, their own uh, ransomware um, uh, software uh, to uh, to attack. 
attack uh, some organizations. And we also have uh, hacktivists, but uh, you need to divide them uh, into different uh, groups. Some, uh, as uh, well-known anonymous, have their own, let's say, characteristic, whether cyber partisans from uh, Belarus are mainly targeting uh, governmental uh, sites uh, because of, let's say, fights with on, on the grounds of the uh, politics. Uh, going also to uh, top threats, according to ENISA, which is uh, not, uh, let's say, finished uh, list of, of such uh, threats. Uh, we can share with you uh, information about ransomware, uh, about uh, malware, social engineering, mainly phishing and, uh, and spoofing. Uh, also, we have threats against uh, data, against availability, uh, disinformation, misinformation, and supply chain uh, targeting. Uh, probably, uh, as you know, uh, ransomware is uh, it's a software uh, that it's uh, used um, and it targets uh, organizations, including a uh, law firm. Uh, with the use of software software uh, that have different functionalities, but mainly of uh, encrypting uh, data uh, in order to uh, to, to uh, ask to, to push the organization to foot for uh, ransom uh, payment. But we also discuss it a bit uh, later. Uh, there are also malwares. Uh, one of the most popular ways of uh, of attacks is social engineering and uh, phishing sp and spoofing. Uh, we'll also uh, discuss it a bit uh, later. We have also trades against uh, data, so all the breaches, leaks, uh, manipulations, and poisoning of uh, data, which can be uh, also uh, seen within uh, uh, AI. Uh, database uh, polls, which is also important when uh, when organizations uh, starts using uh, AI tools. Uh, we also have uh, threats against availability, uh, so denial of service or uh, distributed denial of service, which mainly attack infrastructure and uh, the most uh, common uh, common let's say uh, threats from this side and examples of uh, of such uh, attacks uh, you can see uh, when uh, there are attacks on websites of organizations. Uh, the most common such attacks uh, you can see on public websites uh, of some uh, agencies, ministries, or, or public uh, authorities. Uh, you can also see it uh, as a cause of, uh, of uh, war uh, in Ukraine, uh, in Ukraine governmental uh, sites. You can also see it uh, in uh, some American governmental sites when they are uh, hacked by uh, such state uh, uh, hacking actors. Uh, also, as uh, disinformation and misinformation is also very important uh, threat uh, because of the common uh, use of uh, generative uh, AI, uh, as uh, also deepfakes. Uh, currently, uh, you can uh, sometimes you cannot even be uh, sure if a person that is participating during uh, some uh, online meetings or will send you some information or some documents. Uh, that they are uh, uh, in fact uh, really uh, true or, or they just uh, uh, fake one. Uh, and also as one of the most rising uh, type of uh, threats uh, on the market, also related to uh, to legal market, it's supply uh, chain targeting, uh, which uh, as I will say uh, later, uh, in fact, it's very crucial from the side also of uh, law firms, but also of uh, clients of uh, law firms. And starting from uh, also ransomware, just uh, going through uh, very fast of it, we have a couple of different, uh, let's say, most common types of uh, ransomware attacks. Uh, you can see uh, as encryption, so it's one the basic one when the attack starts uh, from uh, <clears throat> with the use of uh, ransomware and encrypting of uh, data on uh, on computer or on servers, and when there is uh, information that that so called black or uh, or blue screen with the information that uh, you've been hacked and uh, uh, all your dat data was uh, encrypted, uh, please uh, pay. Uh, on the uh, let's say uh, address of uh, some uh, 
uh, some uh, let's say virtual currencies uh, just just in order to not to be found by uh, by uh, special forces police and uh, and so on uh, the second one is just uh, lockers when they uh, lead you to uh, uh, in fact uh, make impossible for the user to use their equipment so it's not uh, even encryption of uh, data but it's uh, in, in fact it's uh, encryption of uh, uh, of the tool that we are using, the infrastructure. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, liquor uh, that it's related just to uh, just of uh, let's say stealing of uh, of our data to uh, to publish them. We have also uh, scareware, which is uh, in fact a very common uh, version of uh, ransomware. Uh, I can share with you um, uh, such examples that, uh, let's say, I was uh, as my law firm we were targeted with a scareware. Uh, I think that in the end of uh, 2023, I think that at least five or six times. It's mainly uh, related to uh, email address that are published on some public registers and uh, such organization uh, get uh, uh, email with uh, ransom information and uh, information that uh, that theoretically you've been hacked uh, uh, just in order to ask you for for ransom. But uh, when you start analyzing all uh, the data, uh, you will just see that uh, that such uh, ransom uh, ask is uh, notification is just uh, a scam. Uh, but in fact, it's uh, it's also related to uh, to it. Uh, also, ransomware as a service, uh, as I've uh, told you before, uh, it's a way of. In fact, it's a way of uh, providing services uh, related to ransomware. Uh, in uh, darknet, there are a lot of uh, marketplaces uh, with ransomware uh, software uh, that, uh, in order for some subscription or for some. Uh, one-time payment, uh, you can start using uh, ransomware tools uh, just to uh, target and to create your own uh, attack uh, for some for organizations that uh, you will choose. Uh, also, as a ransomware, we you need to be uh, aware of uh, three types. The basic one, uh, one so the single extortion, uh, it's uh, based on uh, encryption of data and just asking for ransom to decrypt it. Uh, but uh, as you probably know, uh, chances and possibility uh, of decrypting such data after uh, getting uh, ransom after um, payment of uh, ransom, uh, it's just I would say less than uh, fifty percent. In fact, in uh, most uh, cases, probably uh, such data it's uh, still uh, published, or uh, you will just experience uh, ransomware in their double or triple uh, extortion version. Uh, double extortion, uh, it's a ransomware attack in which uh, such data, it's not only uh, encrypted, but before encryption, uh, the attack uh, attacker, uh, it's uh, mm, it also uh, copy this data and store it in uh, in his uh, infrastructure just to uh, get the second uh, ransom uh, for deleting of uh, such data. And triple, uh, it's in fact uh, double extortion, but the third ransom ask, uh, it's uh, sent to uh, data subjects uh, that the data it's uh, that relates to, to to those subjects. So in fact, in case of law firms, uh, such uh, ransom ask will be sent to such ransom notifications will be sent to uh, clients of uh, of law firm that uh, was hacked. Uh, as of some uh, statistics, here we can see between 2015 to 2022, uh, the annual number of uh, malware attacks uh, worldwide uh, in billions. So the numbers are quite uh, big. As we see in 2018, it was the biggest one, but starting from the pandemic uh, years, it went a bit uh, lower, uh, probably also because uh, a lot of organizations uh, started to taking care more about uh, the security 
and uh, also uh, because of more uh, implementations on, on, on the market of, of the tolls. Uh, here we can see some statistics related to uh, different uh, wor worldwide in 2022 related to uh, some sectors. As you can see, insurance and legal, uh, it was 957 uh, cases uh, uh, average, as an average uh, weekly uh, on the sec in the sector. So uh, average uh, law firm uh, in 2022 could be the uh, could be targeted or was targeted with 957 uh, uh, attacks. Uh, in fact. Uh, every week uh, in 2023 uh, uh, by organizations so in general not on the not with the specifications of the detailed uh, sectors uh, it was uh, 1260 uh, attacks per organization uh, weekly uh, also as you can see sharing also some data from uh, Poland 21 22 you can also see how it was uh, looking with uh, different uh, sectors in Poland. Uh, also, uh, saying something about uh, phishing attacks, uh, you need to know that there are a couple of different uh, versions, couple of different types of uh, such attacks. Uh, in fact, from the side of the uh, of the subject that it's being the target of, of such attack, it's maybe even not so important uh, uh, all of those uh, names and terms for uh, for the different attacks, but just uh, just to show you how it's uh, more detailed and specified. Uh, please see that uh, we have uh, bulk phishing, uh, which is sending just uh, a large number of uh, untargeted uh, phishing emails. Uh, it's without uh, any uh, potential targets. It's just sending as much phishing emails as uh, possible, uh, counting that uh, some of them uh, will, let's say, be successful uh, in this type of, uh, of attack. We have also spear phishing, which is targeting specific uh, individual or business. We have also whaling, which is such spear phishing, but related to, uh, let's say, some executives uh, in within the organization. Uh, we have also vishing, uh, which is related to uh, uh, phone calls or communication, uh, communicator uh, calls. And also we have uh, smishing, which is related to uh, messaging uh, and also uh, with the use of uh, communicator, communicators uh, tools. We have also a uh, business email compromise, which in fact in business organizations is uh, one of the main uh, common uh, attacks within the organization. Uh, you can also see here some statistics uh, that uh, how many even uh, emails were sent a day in 2021, which was 3.4 uh, 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 billion of such uh, emails. Uh, as of uh, social media and uh, messaging app, you can also see that uh, the most used social media that in which uh, such phishing attacks uh, took place, it was LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. Uh, as of LinkedIn, uh, you can also uh, see, uh, starting from uh, last year, uh, a lot of uh, attacks from fake accounts. And uh, please uh, be sometimes aware of uh, unknown people that uh, writes to you uh, and send you an um, uh, email message uh, within the LinkedIn uh, account, uh, just asking you to organize online meeting and sending you uh, some links to such meetings or to even schedule such meetings uh, on even popular, uh, popular platforms. Uh, when you start checking the statistics, uh, a lot of such uh, emails could be uh, just uh, target uh, attack. Uh, as of uh, messaging apps or communicators, uh, the main one that it's a vector of uh, phishing attacks, uh, it's WhatsApp. Uh, it's uh, up to 90% of all attacks for, with the use of messaging apps, it's uh, done uh, through WhatsApp. Uh, as an example, uh, in Poland, we have a very common attack on WhatsApp in the last couple of uh, months. Uh, they are sending um, information and messages uh, related to HR uh, recruitment processes. 
and uh, as a new uh, forms of of, of attacks uh, they are new forms as qr codes uh, phishing attacks that in uh, a lot of different places uh, we are asked to uh, to scan the qr code to uh, just be <clears throat> Uh, just be taken to to other website or to just confirm uh, something on the website. Uh, so be also uh, aware that it's that it could be an easy vector uh, to attack your organization and to take your credentials uh, or even to get uh, access to to your uh, data. Uh, as of uh, multi-factor uh, faking, uh, it, it's just a way uh, of creating a spoofing uh, of uh, multi-factor uh, authenticating web pages that are using multi-factor uh, authentication, and it's also a way to uh, to steal uh, credentials of of such uh, users. Uh, as of uh, new types of uh, attacks related to uh, AI, in fact, uh, generative uh, AI uh, tools. Please be aware, just uh, as in a short, uh, that uh, there can be a lot of different uh, types of attacks. They are related to uh, model thefts, they are related to model interference and also uh, model outcome manipulation. Uh, for example, if uh, some attack will be targeted uh, on the model to just to uh, create to to influence the uh, uh, outcome uh, from such uh, toll, uh, they can easily uh, send uh, a lot of a lot of information. Let's say a big pool of uh, data with fake information, or just to interfere such uh, pool of data that uh, the model is uh, trained. Uh, changing such data with uh, fake uh, data of, or some uh, uh, some data that the attack uh, attack uh, attacking actor uh, wants us to uh, to have, and in fact, when such AI model will be trained on such fake data, it will also uh, interfere with such uh, outcome, and it's also related to data poisoning, as uh, as I told uh, before. Uh, as of uh, supply chain uh, attacks. Uh, and also, uh, at the beginning, I've told that it's very important uh, also for law firm and, and the clients of law firm. Uh, it is. In fact, uh, uh, as you probably know, a lot of uh, clients of, uh, of law firms uh, have better infrastructure, have better cybersecurity policies and better cybersecurity fences uh, than uh, most of the law firms. So, in fact, from the position of uh, attacking subject, attacking actor, uh, the best possible way to get into and steal the data or interfere with the infrastructure of uh, the client of uh, law firm uh, is in fact to uh, either attack uh, uh, some software or infrastructure um, supplier of such client, which uh, in one hand, uh, it, it can be also uh, law firm. Uh, you, you can see here uh, some statistics that 62% of uh, uh, all supply chain attacks use uh, malware and 66% uh, of them were related to uh, source code. Um, there were a couple of even uh, cases when uh, the, the software provider uh, was attacked and when, uh, when the manufacturer, when the software provider were sending updates to its customers of, of software as a, a new version, uh, it was already uh, uh, poisoned. It was already uh, after malware uh, attacks. So every client of such uh, uh, of of such provider who updated uh, their software, uh, in fact, uh, uh, were uh, or was uh, attacked by uh, by such uh, such vector such uh, attack. And as you can see, fifty eight percent of such attacks are mainly aimed uh, on data. Uh, as uh, can be easily uh, either used to uh, obtain uh, ransom or just to uh, to sell it on a black uh, market. Uh, as an example of uh, cyber attack on law firms, uh, we can show an example that was that we had uh, in May 2023 in Poland. Uh, it wasn't uh, targeting, uh, in fact, uh, lawyers uh, itself. Uh, but it was uh, a huge attack and uh, leak of uh, credentials of uh, uh, something about 6 million records of Polish uh, users. Uh, this attack was with the use of uh, malwares through the... <clears throat> 
through a, a lot of months uh, before and uh, after some time uh, the attack actors the hackers uh, just uh, copied such data from uh, from uh, user uh, equipment from user uh, computers and uh, those credentials uh, published uh, in uh, in uh, uh, darknet which is which was uh, published and uh, accessible to uh, to anyone uh, as uh, we've checked uh, on this list it was more than 1000 records uh, that belonged to uh, polish lawyers so in fact uh, a huge uh, amount as of some statistics please just see some uh, basic ones uh, for from last of a couple of years starting from 2020 uh, as you can see uh, and uh, it was uh, statistics from uh, 2022 75% of 100 biggest uk based uh, law firms experience uh, cyber attack uh, in 2020, uh, Bricker and Eggland uh, have uh, such attack in which uh, 430,000 people uh, was affected and this law firm paid uh, uh, almost 2 million uh, in settlements with, uh, with those clients. Uh, in May 2020, uh, another law firm had a huge leak of uh, contract data of uh, uh, famous uh, people Lady Gaga, Madonna and other celebrities. Uh, when uh, were within those uh, uh, within those people that were affected by this uh, by this leak, uh, in February twenty one there was a ransom attack on uh, other U.S. Uh, law firm, uh, another one on uh, November in November twenty twenty two in which uh, more than ninety thousand people were uh, affected. One of the famous one uh, was also related to uh, Uber. Uh, in fact, uh, Uber, uh, one of the service provider of, of Uber, but IT infrastructure was targeted with uh, with ransomware uh, in uh, December uh, 2022. And after that, in January 2023, uh, Genova Burns, which is law firm that provided uh, services to uh, to Uber uh, as of one in one of the states uh, in America, uh, also was targeted and there was a huge league of private uh, data of Uber drivers uh, from that state. Uh, in January and February uh, 23, there was an uh, uh, attack for on law on six law firms uh, that were targeted with uh, Gold Lordern and uh, Sogolish uh, Marwell. Um, another attack, it was in May 2023, uh, this ransomware attack that I've told you before. In Australia, it was uh, conducted by a state uh, actor. Uh, from Russia, uh, it was uh, in fact uh, they stole uh, four terabytes of uh, of data. Uh, this attack and let's say the vector of this attack uh, was conducted by attacker uh, using vulnerabilities in uh, VPN uh, tunnels and also lack of updates uh, uh, of firmware uh, in uh, uh, routers and IT infrastructure of this uh, law firm. Uh, also in July uh, 2023, there was uh, information about uh, attack on uh, 50 US law firms without specific uh, names, but uh, but such information were uh, published. And from those uh, also uh, well known from the last uh, two months, uh, in November, December 2023, there was a series of uh, attacks with the use of Logbit. Uh, it's a ransomware. And uh, probably it was uh, with the use of uh, vulnerability of uh, Citric Bleed, bleed uh, <clears throat> which is uh, uh, used also for credentials and uh, and uh, uh, VPN tunnels. And uh, the two main uh, famous one it was on Allen and Overy and CMS uh, Spain. As of CMS Spain, we have information, at least from the attackers, that uh, they stole 500 of uh, gigabytes of uh, data. Uh, but in case of both uh, law firms, uh, their uh, statements uh, were that the attacks was, uh, let's say, a bit successful, but uh, within the scope of uh, less important uh, 
infrastructure, IT infrastructure of, of those law firms and none of uh, client's data were uh, the subject of, uh, of attack. How it was in true, uh, we still don't know. Uh, we'll probably see in the next couple of uh, months. And uh, maybe the last uh, statistics that at the end of 2023, it's information from the Law Society uh, in UK, uh, that 65% of law firm uh, of all law firms in UK uh, were deemed to suffer uh, a cyber incident. So uh, it can also show you how huge such, uh, uh, let's say, incidents in the amount, uh, in fact, uh, is. Uh, also, some statistics in uh, uh, Poland, but it's based on uh, polls uh, made on some referential uh, list of, of lawyers in, in Poland. Uh, as you can see, how many law firms experienced cyber attack. Uh, yes, it's uh, it, it was thirty three percent, but in fact, those statistics uh, are too too lowered. And I would say that we need to, uh, in fact, uh, change uh, uh, those stats. Uh, it should be two thirds, or in fact, uh, should experience such attacks. But probably most of them they just uh, don't consider uh, some events uh, related to uh, cyber security incidents. Uh, as of some best practices in cybersecurity, you can uh, see uh, some documents here. Uh, so cybersecurity guidelines uh, published in 2018 by uh, IBA. You can also see handbook from 2022 from American Bar Association. Uh, also the Law Society uh, published two uh, documents in 2018 and 2019. And uh, we can also share with you that in Poland, uh, uh, two different uh, uh, bar professions, bar associations published also in 2020, uh, attorneys at law, uh, they published uh, standards for information and processing in the cloud computing. And uh, in 2023, uh, my institute uh, prepared and National Bar Council uh, adopted uh, cybersecurity good practices for law firms and lawyers, uh, which in fact such documents are not so uh, common uh, in bar associations currently, but uh, to my knowledge, uh, more of them within the Europe uh, start such uh, works. Uh, as of uh, best practices and best recommendations, maybe uh, Alexander will say something more, but from my perspective, uh, just think about making backup, uh, encryption, uh, always remember to uh, to update your software, always uh, be sure that uh, the person or the subject that you are corresponding with, uh, it's in fact it's the, the person that uh, you know who it is. Never respond, never click in links uh, sent to you by unknown uh, people, unknown organizations, even if it's uh, sent by some known organizations like uh, universities, uh, international organizations. In fact, it uh, can be just uh, phishing uh, with the use of also spoofing, uh, spoofing techniques. Uh, here you have uh, some tips, uh, also tools to, that you can uh, use from, uh, from my side. Uh, here is VirusTotal, it's a website uh, created by Google. Uh, in fact, you can uh, check here either files, uh, either website addresses, uh, as for uh, lawyers, I wouldn't recommend uh, to use this um, functionality with checking file. It's because, in fact, you give uh, Google the access to, to this file and to, uh, to check its content. Uh, but this website is really good for, for checking some uh, website addresses uh, if it's infected or are there any suspicious, uh, let's say, information or, or possible vectors of attack related to this uh, website. Uh, as of uh, best practices related to passwords, here you can have just simple. Uh, you have just simple information. Uh, how much time uh, it takes to uh, to brute force a password? Uh, don't stick to those uh, data because, in fact, uh, every month, every year, those uh, those time uh, is uh, let's say uh, shorter and shorter. Uh, I would say. Uh, in fact, when um, when quantum computing will be more accessible. 
uh, to normal people and organizations. Uh, in fact, those statistics will be just uh, shortened to even sometimes a couple of uh, seconds. Uh, if we would say about current technique of uh, encryption, and uh, would just need to uh, get used to uh, in post quantum uh, techniques, but uh, you will see it uh, in future. And from my side, I think that uh, it would be this one. Alexander, floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. Uh, actually, uh, our uh, webinar was uh, scheduled for 45 minutes, and we have just five minutes left uh, before the Q&A. So I'll see what I can share in the five minutes that we have left. I think and that we can do it a bit longer <laughs> if if other will agree. No, I don't have more, much more time. So uh, in general, I'll skip lots of things. So uh, on average, the average attack that happens in a company and uh, even in law firms, uh, let me just see. Yeah, so the average attack, if you see the breach, if you look at the screen, if you see the breach, it happens in just so the, uh, in just two weeks, uh, from the time they start the attack to the time that the attack is successful, it takes them two weeks, but that's on average. Sometimes the attack can happen in a, you know, just a few minutes. And then they stay in the company for months up to years. And the ransomware, uh, ransomware is just a symptom of an attack. Because if they can make money by selling your data, if they can make money by selling your client's data, they will, and they will keep making money by selling access to your law firm, to the highest bidder, or by selling the documents of your clients, or the, by selling the documents of your firm, they'll keep doing that. They have really no reason to trigger the ransomware stage. Uh, oftentimes, the ransomware stage is triggered when they've already made all the money they can, and they are ready to exit your organization because they know that you might not pay, you might have backups, you might uh, restore the data, you might find a decryption key, and ransomware is really their last resort of making money. So you shouldn't look at the ransomware as something to prevent uh, because it, it's not the ransomware that you should be preventing. It's the breach that you should be preventing in the first place. Uh, so you see, if you just buy, and most law firms, uh, as I mentioned, I worked with law firms across the United States and Europe and uh, the Middle East, and most law firms think exactly this way. They'll, they have an antivirus, they'll get a firewall, maybe something with the next gen in the name, and then they feel safe. But uh, in fact, all attacks that happened in law firms, every single attack. And if I go back to a specific slide, this is DLA Piper. You think DLA Piper, one of the largest law firms in the world, didn't have a firewall. They didn't have an antivirus. They still got hacked and not just hacked. They Every single computer, everything was down in this law firm. And uh, you can rest assured that the hackers had access for a long time uh, and probably, probably did something with that data. Now, uh, don't rely on your antivirus. Don't rely on your firewall. Hackers really don't care if you have a firewall and they don't care if you have an antivirus. They can bypass that like that, that easy. So uh, we should go deeper in, you know, and, and, and all those firms, all those companies, Companies got hacked. If you look at them, they all had antivirus and a firewall. So, um, how do you fight them? It's uh, you have to really take a look at the people, processes, and technology. You can't just fix things with technology. You can't just fix these things by buying stuff. And uh, it's the right approach. So, your technical team has to do uh, have the right approach instead of buying solutions and looking for providers of commercial security solutions, they should be doing the right practices of defending your computers and data. 
And really, you have to walk before you can run. Because 20% of your actions, 20% of technical configuration, 20% of uh, everything that you do to defend the company, the law firm, is 80% of the results. If there are, there are actions. Uh, and defending the endpoint has nothing to do with an antivirus. It has nothing to do uh, with uh, the firewall on the endpoint. It's all about security hardening. So there is this tool called Harden Tools. It's free and it's open source. It's posted on GitHub. You can just Google Harden Tools GitHub. You'll see the download link and you can just run it, but be very, very careful. Uh, it's mostly ap ap uh, applicable to individuals. It's not applicable to large law firms. Large law firms should use other hardening techniques, but hardening really means applying the right security settings on the operating system. As you can see also on the Adobe Reader, on uh, and Adobe Reader, Adobe Reader is an entry point. It, it re Adobe release security updates for Adobe Reader every couple of weeks. And if you haven't updated your PDF reader in months, then just receiving a PDF, just opening a PDF can get yourself infected because uh, they have exploits, something that is uh, similar to malware, but not really malware. But then you go even deeper. Uh, there are hardening scripts over the internet. Uh, even I have mine on GitHub. And my hardening script has 90, 950 lines of security settings of everything, of browsers, operating systems, uh, the antivirus, and, and so on and so on. All the settings that are missing by default and hackers take advantage of them. And then you have uh, uBlock Origin, which is a browser extension. I highly recommend that you go and download it immediately. If you have other ad block extensions, get rid of them and get your block origin. Why? Because it has those settings. If you go into the settings of the plugin, you can enable the specific uh, specific security configurations, which block thousands and thousands of potential malicious websites, and those get updated all the time. On top of that, you can install zero patch to protect from uh, zero day attacks which are not patched by by vendors yet uh, and i highly recommend that you get the commercial version because they have more patches it's cheap enough compared to the value that it brings uh, that i would highly recommend that and then uh, of course don't give everyone in the law firm admin rights on their computers because what happens on the screen is exactly what happens with when people have admin rights if your users can install software with admin rights uh, then hackers really, it's like taking candy from a kid for a hacker to take advantage and completely hack that machine. It's incredibly easy. So don't give users admin rights. If you need to install software across all the computers in the law firm, there are ways to do that uh, centrally without giving people administrative rights. And of course, uh, the IT department in the law firm should also not have admin rights. And I know this is counterintuitive, but it's reality. And uh, the IT department should have the same rules as the users. They should and uh, they should elevate every time they need to install something because I can't tell you how many times I've seen companies and law firms getting hacked because a IT department employee, even someone uh, experienced, clicks on a malicious link and they are admin. They click, they get themselves infected, and the whole company gets infected just because the IT admin wasn't careful. Uh, uh, here are some technical details that I will miss because we don't have much time. Uh, I just don't have time for this, but uh, I hope you have the recording and you can uh, take, like, pause the video and go to the labs and web labs and configure that, maybe send this to your IT admins so they could implement it because they really don't have time to discuss all of this. Um, and your Active Directory, because most law firms have Active Directory as the central uh, identity management tool, uh, this is crucial. So to defend Active Directory, there are tools such as Pink Castle and others, but you should really run this tool and uh, see your risk and try to decrease your risk. And this is one of the most valuable tools you can run uh, to defend your Active Directory. Uh, 
I have an article on LinkedIn, which says, you know, bring breaking 30% of all Active Directory accounts in two days, regardless of the size of the organization. If you have 10,000 employees, it will take the same amount of time. If you have 10 employees, maybe it will take a little bit less time, but uh, it's really easy to break 30% of all passwords in an Active Directory for a hacker. It doesn't take rocket science skills. Uh, it's easy. And of course, uh, to prevent that, there are password filters. So I would highly recommend that you Google what a password filter is and try to implement that uh, one of them because there are many free and open source ones, many commercial ones. The commercials will, the commercial versions will save you time. The open source versions will save you money. It's your choice uh, what you want to do. Uh, password managers. You can use KeePass, you can use KeePass XC. XC uh, KeePass XC is actually better. But for a larger firm, I would really recommend something commercial, uh, such as 1Password. But this is free. I'm only showing it because uh, a free password manager is better than no password manager at all. And uh, the reason to use a password manager is because you only need to remember 1Password, and that's the password for the password manager. And then you can have hundreds and thousands of passwords inside uniquely generated and you don't need to remember them you just copy and paste or they can even be copied and pasted automatically when you log in now uh your mail gateways and that's for it people uh it's not relevant most lawyers will not even understand what the mail gateway is but there are extensions that if they're blocked on the mail gateway they will prevent a significant amount of... Uh, again, you can post it, uh, apply them uh, after the webinar. Uh, network segmentation is crucial. Uh, I Again, I won't go into details here because we don't have time. Uh, Two-factor authentication. Get the Microsoft Authenticator app. And I would prefer that you use phishing-resistant two-factor authentication because two-factor authentication, having two-factor authentication doesn't mean that hackers just give up and you know ignore your organization. There are ways to bypass two-factor authentication. If you don't believe me, go on Google and search bypass two-factor authentication. You'll find hundreds of thousands of articles written by hackers, by security engineers on how to bypass two-factor authentication. So having that is not a you know silver bullet. Uh, have like a specific, uh, have a phishing resistant uh, two-factor authentication. That's what you should be looking for. And again, I mean, I'm just showing you an example. The hacker creates a phishing page asking for the 2FA code. You sent the 2FA code to the phishing page and it's as if you didn't have two-factor authentication. The hacker gets in just as easily. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, uh, hackers work from uh, across the globe. Uh, and yeah, many attacks come from Russia, especially against Europe. Many attacks come from Iran, from China, but you can receive attacks from your country. And it's very likely that you will get attacked by your competitors or by the law firm of your uh, opponent in a legal case. And I'm not saying that the law firm will attack you, but they might hire someone to get certain emails and take advantage in the case. So keep that in mind. It's happening more often than you can think. Uh, now, uh, there are crucial things that you, that you should have in your security program. Password management, password management, access management, it's probably the most important one taking care of remote access and making sure it's not protected just with a password. That's, that's uh, of course, uh, quite important. Uh, and attack mitigation, because you need to look at all the attacks that hackers can uh, implement again, against your company and prevent them. Security awareness, I would say it's a must uh, and you should do it regularly and you should simulate attacks and you should take care about the people who fall victim because they will fall victim to actual attacks. And you should simulate all kinds of attacks against your company all the time throughout the year at random intervals and reward people who don't fall victim and train people who fall victim. And everything else you see on the screen, uh, again, um, since we don't have much time left, 
Uh, I won't go into more technical details, but those are all important points that you should take care of when it comes to security. And as you can see, I'm not even mentioning antivirus. I'm not even mentioning a firewall, password management, remote access, policies and procedures, attack mitigation, vulnerability management. Like many law firms use cloud, cloud services, uh, like document management systems and all kinds of things. And you should be defending those in the right way uh, by taking a risk-based approach. Uh, penetration testing uh, is a must if you run your own services. And that's crucially important for legal tech firms because if your legal tech product is not tested in the way the hackers would test it, they will test it, but they will not let you know of the results. Uh, that's what I can say. And uh, of course, web services security. Uh, so um, if you have questions, you can go ahead and ask them now. I see that we have quite a lot of people. You can unmute yourself. You can ask uh, with a voice or uh, in the chat box. Yeah, we have a question from uh, Yug. Data protection impact assessment, okay. You see hackers are already using AI and hackers have been using AI for quite some time. It's guaranteed that cybersecurity firms will we be implementing AI? Actually, AI doesn't exist yet. And that's one key point that I want, want to make. AI is it doesn't exist. AI is a marketing term for now. For now, we have language models and those language models can take certain, uh, you know, uh, they can devise solutions, but they are not actual AI. So there are language models that can that can make your life easier. You can implement language models today, such as ChatGPT and others. But uh, GDPR is more, let's say, um, it has technical and legal implementations, which uh, for which there are no machine uh, language or language model tools yet. I see that uh, Nora Putri would like to ask. Yeah. Hi, Alexander. Thank you so Hello. much for a great presentation. So I'm Nora. I'm from Indonesia. Um, I have some questions. Uh, so um, in the absence of an IT team within a law firm, how can the legal professionals proactively mitigate cybersecurity risk and enhance the security posture to to protect sensitive client data from potential cyber threats. So the, the condition is actually, um, my law firm, uh, we, we don't have any IT team. So how can we mitigate those kind of cyber threats so far? Many law firms that have IT teams actually. Uh, yeah. And if we look at the spread of law firms, probably 90% of law firms are less than 10 or 20 people. Uh, if we look at the number of law firms globally, and it's logical that they don't have an IT team because you have like 10 lawyers, you're not going to hire a full-time IT employee for 10 lawyers or for 20 lawyers. So in those cases, hire a cybersecurity firm, get them uh, to help you for uh, a month or two, and you'll be good to go. I mean, that's the best advice I can give you. It's uh, You need to protect the, the service that you're using, the computer that you're using. It doesn't take much time. Uh, uh, you just apply the time, protect them, and that's it. Um, so uh, maybe our employees doesn't even understand about the link that actually consists of malware or maybe ransomware or, or another threat. So... Um, would you mind to tell um, the characteristic of uh, several links that actually had a, um, consist of cyber threat inside? Thank you so much. I actually can't 
there are thousands of them. So uh, every day hackers come up with different ways. They can send you a document which is partially uh, hidden and ask you to click somewhere on that document to enable the content and get you hacked if you enable the hidden content. So uh, the main character, <laughs> you shouldn't even think about that because uh, thinking about, I want to detect the malicious links and then I'll be protected. Yeah, you'll be protected by 3% of the cyber attacks that will come after you, 3%. So even if I tell you all the characteristics of a malicious link, and those will change tomorrow, uh, you'll be you'll be not protected from ninety seven percent of the threats out there. Look for HTTPS, of course, but hackers, you think uh, hackers can create a HTTPS link? That is such. I mean, ninety percent of the cybersecurity uh, awareness trainings out there look for the little you know lock because because if it's not https then it's not secure. hackers have not been using links without https for years they know how to make it seem like it's legitimate so uh relying on detecting a link will guarantee a breach you should have measures in place that don't rely on people uh, being on lawyers, being your defense. Lawyers should do legal work. Their computers must be protected. Their browsers must be protected. Your mailing system must be protected. Your data must be protected. And then, and then only after that, you take care of security awareness. That's the best thing I can say. Okay, thank you so much, Alexander. I see a question from Valentin. Can you bring a difference? in implementation of cybersecurity measures for law firm and in-house legal teams. Are there any differences? Yeah, in-house legal teams, usually that means that there is a large infra, a large enterprise. Uh, large companies have in-house legal teams and those legal teams take advantage of the law of the large enterprises, IT team and potentially a security team. Whereas law firms, as we already said, many times don't even have an IT team, what about a security team? So that's the difference. The difference is that law firms don't have anyone to protect them or to build proper IT. And they improvise. And those improvisations usually lead to security breaches. And many, many security breaches will go unnoticed. Hackers come in, they take whatever they need to take, they go out, you never find out. And you think you're safe. And you've been hacked 10 times in the past five years, you don't even know about it. Uh, yeah, uh, the difference in approach. Okay, Valentin, thanks for clarification. The difference in approach is that when you protect an in-house legal team, you do, usually do it in a large organization, again, and you usually implement everything centrally from a central management system, be it a central management system for security or something else. Whereas for law firms, you apply things computer by computer. For smaller law firms specifically, you apply things computer by computer. That's the difference. But uh, the actual settings are more or less the same. Yeah, local server or cloud. Well, think about it. Let's say you use Microsoft for your cloud mail solutions. Microsoft has thousands of security engineers. You can rely on Microsoft to have at least some level of defense on your behalf. Whereas if you have a local server, who are you relying on? Are you relying on a, a, a intern working at a cheap IT consulting firm to, in, to install the uh, server? Do you know the security qualifications of the person installing the server? Do they even know how to protect that local server? Those are all questions that you need to answer. Any other questions?
No, no, Valentin, that's not true. Local servers are, if we compare a local server to a cloud service, but not just any cloud service, because you can host a virtual server on, on, on by yourself on AWS, and that server will be just as insecure as your local server. Local servers, why, why people think that local servers are not accessible to attacks? Local servers are accessible to an attack the moment any computer in the company gets hacked. The moment the internal computer gets hacked, that local server is not internal anymore. It, it's external. It becomes external the moment the hacker is in the network. And for a hacker to get into a network, which is small and uh, you know not protected, it's child's play. Whereas for a hacker to hack into a Microsoft environment or a Google environment, it's not child's play. So that's the difference. Yeah, Sophia, I think you will, I hope that you'll get a recording. Uh, that's for the organizers of the webinar. They can uh, manage the logistics and send the recording to all participants. I hope that they will. Yeah, but uh, please also, also uh, don't forget uh, about... Uh, uh, confidentiality of all data related to uh, to your clients and even if you process something uh, in cloud services uh, such data should also be uh, in some way uh, protected uh, you can think about even your own uh, additional encryption but it really it uh, can influence uh, the functionalities that you can do with such data within uh, those cloud uh, services but it should be every time uh, the decision of uh, of the organization that's uh, using the services so uh, in fact there are no uh, let's say uh, perfect mm -hmm. solutions for in, in case of uh, uh, law firms, I would say. Either way, you, we need to do something additional uh, apart from the provider that uh, provides you with the service of or with uh, infrastructure. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, since uh, I don't see any more questions and I really have to go because... Uh... I had other things planned. I have to go. I'll la I'll leave you with uh, the hosts and uh, wish you all a great day. Take care, everyone. Thank you.